eight, nine years ago. We managed to secure some funding to run some trials, but this was based on the results that a particular individual had achieved, and that was feeding biochar to his beef cattle and having dung beetles bury it. Now, the winter active dung beetles bury down to 60 centimetres. And we've had that analysed by Professor at um, University of New South Wales, and there is significant improvement in the fertility of the soil. Um, in, including things like lifting pH, including pasture production and so on. So we've had, um, had funding to replicate that trial down at Bannister Downs. Um, and it was the purpose of that was to see, could biochar be used, they've got a thousand head in their dairy, could it be implemented in a commercial dairy? And the answer was yes. Um, the... Um, Another trial that was set up, and I've got a couple of files there showing the results of year one, two and three, was in an avocado orchard where uh, it was incorporated 2010 and 5% volume for volume in the planting zone of avocados. Um, the difference between the 36 um, treated trees and the control trees is astronomical to such an extent that there have been road trains and road trains and road trains of biochar going out of Kemerton to the district where there are not just avocados, but kiwi fruit, citrus, and I don't know who else is using it. So what we wanted to do was to demonstrate that there is a demand, there is an agricultural advantage in using biochar, and I think we've proven that. Um, and then that would create an opportunity for an industry to be developed. Now for um, small landholders, you know, landholders have got their own agroforestry, small patch of agroforestry on their properties. It may be a way that you can produce your own biochar that will add value to whatever else it is you're doing on your property. So whether you were to sell your feedstock to be produced by somebody or other else, and today I heard a figure of $10 for burnt carry stumpage. Um, the price that Kemenon are charging at the moment is $120 a cubic metre, which is around about um, $300 a tonne. So if you can turn your $10 at the farm to something a little bit more, you get about 30% return um, after it's, what do they call it, thermally decomposed is the process. It's not burnt, it's just pyrolysized in the absence of oxygen. But similar... Um, Simultaneous to this has been a whole lot of research that's taking place about what other benefits you can get out of biochar. And my focus has been on agriculture, but there are many other, and one I think that would really perhaps interest Bevan's group, and maybe this, is incorporating biochar into packaging material because it absorbs those chemicals that accelerate decomposition of the produce. Um, but in building, improving bitumen, improving concrete, there are just so many ways it can be used. Um, but we have to start industries um, and to actually get this produced. The oil mallee, classic example, it's already there, up and running. It's an opportunity to capitalise on it. So what we want to do is to um, stimulate sufficient interest to, to get this off the ground. Um, Biochar has been accepted as a soil amendment for the car carbon sequestration methodology now. Uh, and Josh Breidenberg's talking about, gosh, we can't stem stuff to China anymore. We have to do something with our organic feedstock. So there, are, there sounds like there may be money available to capitalise on it. So we've established the Biochar Network of Western Australian Incorporated Body. And the purpose of that is for members to learn from one another so we can learn and, and optimise, not all make the same mistake. So that was that's the purpose of that. And we're having our first meeting on the 24th of May in Manjum up here, um, where we'll be talking about some of the trials that we've been happen having and um, and also having a demo of one being um, a Contiki kiln being fired up. So the Contiki kiln is the poor man's kiln that I have that can be used on farm where you can put um, biomass of any sort in it. You create a flame of curtain so that you can reduce the oxygen in it because you want to end up with the char, you don't want to end up with ash. Um, but there are, you know, go to any number of sophisticated retorts and gasifiers and whatever. So ideally locally, it would be co-location of a larger facility 
to a unit that requires or has high energy costs, whether it's heating, cooling or whatever, or uh, someone like a, a sawmill that has waste that can be used on site. Um, I'm thinking of the farmer and the farmer doesn't want to have extra processes that take place. So um, my kiln, I just throw in anything that I've got. Now, obviously, if you put things in that are roughly uniform in size, they will burn more evenly at that time. And you just keep adding to it as this kiln um, grows, the, the, the char in the kiln um, level grows. So, um, yes, there are uh, units available where you just put in logs, whatever, it'll come out as a log, but it's very easy to break up. It's very yeah. brittle. So, so you break it up into a small size that could then be uh, turned into the soil or, or what? Um, well, I haven't done this much. I've only done two loads before the fire ban kicked in at the end of last year. But I was putting in lumps of four by two offcuts from a shed that I'd pulled down. Um, but it was coming out small clumps. It just fractures along the vascular structure of whatever the feedstock is. So there's not a lot of crushing that needs to take place at the end. But I am investigating that next step because I'm, I'm um, probably a hammer mill might be the way to make it to three mil and smaller. It's probably the ideal size for um, horticulture and so on. Different feedstock gives you different pH levels, different nutrient characteristics. Um, and when I was looking at that saligna down there at Andrew's place, I mean, saligna's high, um, shiok's high in um, silica. And silica is a really important um, nutrient to have in, in, um, in a horticulture as well. So, yeah, we need to do a lot more research in this area about what is the best um, the length of time it's in pyrolysis, the temperature it gets to, the feedstock, and then, of course, you can add bits and pieces to it to turn it into uh, mineral complexes and slow-release fertilisers. So it's a really exciting space, folks. I'm also on the working group of the Australian New Zealand Biochar Conference that's held in the, in the Gold Coast later this year. Um, one of the abstracts was for um, feeding it to poultry. Um, there's been plenty of there's plenty of information overseas, even in the third world. But of course, in Australia, we don't believe it unless we do it here. Um, it was five percent increase in um, weight of a of dressed chicken, and they were fed two percent um, weight for weight on on um, their their feed. That was the contribution of biochar. One of the techniques that's been used, and this is what we'd like to know about retrofitting, so if you uh, ripped a channel um, outside the root zone or the edge of the root zone and, and incorporate it there. Well, in this avocado trial, we've got two techniques. One is incorporating it prior to planting, and the other was mixing biochar in with compost, which is you need to have activated biochar. Just by itself, it draws the nutrients anyway. It needs to be activated, whether it's with a fertiliser or with compost. So we put this compost blend as a mulch. Um, because it's a three-year project, it needs to go longer than that before we'll get appreciable differences, but it would be a slow process. It looks like getting it into the ground is, is what you need to do. Application right directly? Um, Greg Butler in South Australian No-Till Farming Group is getting a return on 50 kilos a hectare on, um, now I don't know which broadacre crop that is. Um, we've got no appreciable difference between the 20 to the 5, so I certainly wouldn't be recommending 20%, um, but can you go less than 5? But we also know it can be used in a foliar spray and uh, enters the leaves that way in certainly much smaller rates.